don't see that pain was all around. See my mode was kind of lounge. Didn't know which which way to drop the show. And I just feel no burn. Energy up, you can feel my surge. I'm gonna kill everything like this ready for the box of breaks for your series. Way in, you can see that I've been joined by a real motley crew. Thanks for having me, Johnny Nelson. Good afternoon and welcome to Scott Street. Johnny, come to you first. Let's start with Adam and Z. This box is a great little bit. Better than Matt. The box is a little bit. Very, very excited about Adam and Z. Explain why. I've said all week I've got, I'm excited about you, man, from day dark. I, I was around at the beginning of Britain, Pete Hammond's day. Uh, and, and the, the excitement, the, the, the talent that he had, I've seen in Azeem. Now, now, if Azeem can transfer that to beyond the Met, to beyond the European, to world level, the same example we are experiencing now, what you're experiencing world level. Now, people might think it's a bold claim, but trust him, when they, and that's what they're exactly saying. Now, Azeem needs to be a bit of an attitude, he'll be a super nice guy, but if he can back the ball, and try and take a transition to top world level, we are Give him time. It is a ball to play. But the reason that Johnny feels like that in June is because he's had four fights, trying to have a five already at ten rounds. Same as we're going to be exposed to the team they are very, very confident. You know, everyone at Fox up. There's a lot of hype behind him. Are we all getting carried away? Timing is everything in this game. Are they timing it right? Absolutely. Listen, you've only got to listen to what Shane says about him in, in, in the gym. You know, he says that he's probably one of the best, most talented kids he's worked with. Look at Shane's resume. The fighters that he has worked with. Tells you the potential that this guy's got. And as he, he, he uses confidence. He's out of him last night, actually. And do you know what? He attracts it's such a big crowd already. He's got so much interest. We went to an Indian restaurant last night. You did a meet night. and greet, and there was a, a fleet of like seven supercars. I thought they were yours. No, they, they definitely weren't mine. I thought one of them might have been yours, actually. But there was seven there, Lamborghinis, and, and, and like, we all went to this restaurant. There was, I don't know, 150, 200 people doing a meet and greet. They're talking about kids that's had four fights. Right, what's he going to be like when he's had 10 fights? And I agree with Johnny with the comparison to Miss Imami. Naz was boxing around in the day. I used to spar with Naz. We grew up with the England TV team together. And he always had that flair and that bit of charisma. You always knew he was going to be special. I think this kid's got the same aura about him. You know, I've, I've been around Naz in the day and I've been around this guy. And you go, every now and then we get patterns that got to that level now. That's why you recognise yeah, it in young men like Adam. You know, you recognise, you think, oh my God, I've seen that before. I recognise that. But it's interesting because, I mean, I'm, I don't want to put words in your mouth. This is where you say, no, that was a misconception. But Naz had the gift of the gab. Adam Azim is quiet as a mouse. Yeah. Everything he does is with his fists. And talking is not his natural game. But, 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 so that's where that comparison is slightly different. But today, you know, in this today's society, you can't just be a good fighter. You've got to have the whole package. You've got to be a salesman. So he's either got to develop a chip on his shoulder and make the press love or hate him. Or he's going to be a super nice guy and you think, oh, you know what, I really, there's got to be something more about him to make that springboard. There's got to be something that, that grabs your attention to want to watch him win or lose. And, and I don't know what it'll be. It might come with maturity, it might come with something else, but he can fight. So he's got the most important side of it covered. Just so I don't want to run out of time, just one quick word on the yeah. opponent. You've been around in the fight hotel, yeah. Anthony Lafay. He did an open workout yesterday. Yeah. What vibes are you getting from him? Listen, he's coming with a winning record. You know, he's only lost the one fight. He's coming with a winning record and a winning mentality. He's coming confident, but he doesn't know really what he's coming in up against. I don't believe. You know, I think that you know Azim is one of those kids, and you're right. He's not a cocky kid, and he's not. He's not one of those guys. But you gravitate towards him. There's something you can't put your finger on it. I would agree There's with an that. aura yeah. about him that you just go like, I don't know what it is about this kid, but he's got something. He might not have the gift of the gab as in when you're talking, but he's such a likable guy. It's so weird, but yeah, Luffy, he's a guy that's coming. He thinks he's coming to win, which is good because he's a guy that comes forward. He keeps his hands hands up and he likes to have a fight, but. Probably the wrong tactics against someone like Azimu, who's got incredibly quick hands, great boxing IQ, and can really punch. Sam Higginson's probably got a bit of a hump this week because we're doing more talking about Adam Azim than Sam Higginson. But what is left to say about Sam Higginson that hasn't already been said? One of Britain's most entertaining fighters. You know exactly what you're going to get on Saturday night. And that's not doing Sam Higginson down, it's bigging him up. You know that that is guaranteed entertainment, unless I'm completely wrong. And is in with an unbeaten banger as well. Sam Eggington, when he gets in the ring, entertainment, heart and soul, he's a very honest professional. So, so even on a bad day, he's going to give you entertainment, he's going to give it his all. I think this, to me, and he's been in some tough fights, 
He's still in his 20s. I think this is his opportunity to get some form of a title to say, you know what, I'm all right here. Then consider looking at the end of the road. But he's still live enough, fresh enough to, to actually to pull something like that off. And so for, for me, Sam Higginson, top of the bill, I'm so pleased for this young man. He looks so much better at 154. He, he looks he looks a completely different human. How he did he 147, does. Yeah. well, I, I don't think he did it healthily. Uh, or you, we weren't getting the best of him, I should say. Well, listen, look, he looks tight at 154. So 147 was, must have been an absolute nightmare. Speaking as someone that used to struggle to make weight, used to be very tight at the weight, I know what that can do to your performances. You have your on days where they're really good, and when they're bad, they're really bad because you, you, you haven't hit that weight right. Now he's got that extra few pounds. I think that's why we're going to see something really good from Sam Eggington. Who, you won't believe that he's only 28 years of age. When you look at his resume and how long he's been around, the fights that he's been involved in, fight of the year contenders, I mean, two or three times. Prize fighter feels like a lifetime ago. Absolutely. It literally a, a different life. It, it really does. does. It does, but stylistically, this fight is made for him to look good, Eggington. You know, both guys are going to go and meet, and they will lock horns early. And it's a great fight. He's in against an unbeaten and yet opponent. He looks really good at this stage. He does. Usually yeah. at Wayne, he looks gone. He does. He looks yeah, I thought, yeah. All Let's right, see what it. he looks like on the scales, but I'm not expecting any problems there. Prezemislav Zisk is the Polish operator, 18 and 0. He's only boxed outside of the UK, uh, outside of Poland once before, so it's his first time coming to the UK. Karis Artingstall, final one before we get over to a start our undercard weigh-ins. There's a lot of excitement around Karis. Who wants to go first? Because Spenny, you, you've kind yeah, of... Yeah, I've been around her a bit. Yeah, actually, I mean, yeah. You, you've actually become a friend with yeah, her, Yeah, absolutely, you? I have. And she's a great girl, you know, outside of the ring. She's very charismatic, great girl. She's made the weight so comfortably, by the way. She said it's the first time she's made featherweight as comfortable as she has. And she's actually come in a lot lighter for this one. So she's in a really good place mentally. Can't wait. And, and ironically, she's saying the thing that she's really looking forward to is the ring walk. She's saying that's, that's the thing that's been going over and over in her head. Just the ring walk with the crowds, etc. And Lauren was saying the thing, her partner Lauren Price was saying exactly the same thing two weeks ago. That that was the thing that was making them a little bit nervous and a little bit edgy was doing that first ring walk. So, yeah, she's, um, she's really looking forward to it, Karis. And I, and I'm expecting something special. Johnny, we'll pick up with you later. But for now, let's go over to our Master of Ceremonies, Bud A. Johnson. Welcome, everybody, to the official weigh-ins right here at the Village Hotels in Coventry. Boxer by Ben Shalom presents Breakthrough at the Sky Dome Arena tomorrow night. We're here right now, the official weigh-ins on Sky Sports, as we thank our sponsors, Bet365, Everlast, Village Hotels, and Wow Hydrates, our official hydration partner of today's weigh-ins. And before we begin, our sanctioning body, the British Boxing Board of Control, overseeing the weigh-in today with Supervisor Spencer Hedges and Matt Harris in attendance. Ladies and gentlemen, the time is now, and we begin in the Cruiserweight Division as we welcome Tony Visage and Scott Forrest to the stage. First up, please welcome Tony Visage. Here comes... Tony Visic, the 32-year-old from Croatia. And the cruiserweight division, Tony Visic steps to the scales. The professional record, 20, 32 and 2 from Split, Croatia. Tony Visic, the 32-year-old from Croatia. Let's hear his Tony weight. Tony Visic weighed in officially at 14 stone and 4 pounds. 14-4 and he looks in good shape, Johnny. He does look in good shape. Uh, not the biggest of cruiserweights, uh, but looks solid. Um, opponent, not fleshy, so so he's in a position where you know, he's a he, he's a cruiserweight through and through. Would he make light heavyweight? I don't know because not a bit. Now Scott, there now is no like, fat on that frame. He looks like a fighting machine. Oh, he's a PT. He's, a, you know, he's naturally fit. Scottish amateur champion, with a professional record of one and zero. And with it officially at 14 stone, 5 pounds. Very impressive looking. Yeah, <laughs> it was. he was impressive in his debut as well. You know, he comes with a wealth of experience, beat Joshua Boazzi, actually, as an amateur. You know, he's, he's been around... He's been around the game a little bit and I'm expecting good things from Scott Forrest. He was a little bit unlucky that in his debut he fought Eric Nazarian, who was actually a bit of a hard man on the circuit. But as it was, he 
didn't look good on the scales. He didn't look good in the ring. And Scott Forrest just did an absolute job on him. We didn't yeah. get to learn too much, other than that he hits very hard. And the, the, the pro ranks are about low learning, you know, and, and you've got to learn and get all shapes and sizes. And it's not just physically, it's mentally as well. You've got to be able to deal with that. So that's, that's part of his journey. from a very good stable uh, Scott Forrest of uh, Declan O'Rourke and Joseph McNally tracing him let's uh, between Casey Benjamin and Carlos Daniel Cordoba first to the scales please welcome Carlos Daniel Cordoba doing my best not to speak over the MC but uh, here comes Daniel Cordoba Carlos Cordoba He's 27 with a professional record of 15 victories against 7 defeats. Weighing in officially at 9 stone 13 pounds. El Zorito is known as one his last two and we welcome his four of his last five. Casey Benjamin! Twenty-six-year-old Casey Benjamin, the professional record fifteen victories, undefeated one draw, and weighed in at ten stone even. So Casey Benjamin, was it? Was he not on the first uh, boxer? To, um, Ultimate boxer it was then. Yeah, Is that right. Mm. And that, that was that right, four years ago, I think you were saying. <laughs> John Pegg said to Ben Shalom afterwards, you're focusing on the wrong guys. Casey Benjamin is the one that you've got to take a look at. He also said to Casey Benjamin, it's the entertainment business, you're a brilliant boxer, but maybe you should start to look, look to knock people out. He's taken that on board and he, he's knocking people out now. Sat down and talked with him yesterday and he, he actually gets that. He actually said, this is my job, just check me out. Keen chess player, former unbeaten Midlands area. Yeah, welterweight champion as well. This will be part of our face the Argentinian super lightweight champion. And we continue with the Williams now. In the super welterweight division between Bartosz Wawatski and Shaquille Dr. Steele Thompson. First to the scales, please welcome Bartosz Wawatski. Standing 5 feet 11 with a professional record, five victories, eight defeats in a single tour, fighting out of Poland. And weighed in at 11 stone, one pound, and five ounces. 30 years old, looks lean, looks in decent condition. And introduce his opponent to the scales, Shaquille Dr. Steel Thompson. And Gravotsky had a look on his face when Shaquille Thompson was at the back of the room. Look at the size of him. How on earth is he doing this weight, Johnny Spencer? He looks like a basketball player. I go in the gym where he trains uh, with Roger Sampson. The likes of Billy Joel Saunders, Kel Brook, Adam Etches. All these guys have, have really wanted to get invest in this young man at the beginning of his career because of the type of fight he is. He likes to fight and he's a good fighter. He likes he to like box he, and he's a good boxer. He looks like he could do like heavyweight. That, yeah. If you looked at him as a, as a, a size of him. He's, he's massive for the weight, tall, southpaw, awkward, you know, comes with a good amateur pedigree. Fighters have egos, Gravatsky's never been stopped. Shaquille Thompson on his Sky Sports and Box debut will want to be that man, surely. And Shaquille's got a, an ego, he has an ego too. And, and when you go in the gym, it's like walking in the cronks. The trainer, the amount of times the trainer to tend to calm down with his mates when he's sparring with them. Anybody that's sparring in there, he wants to take their head off. He's got, a, he's got that mentality. And Kill apparently said, you know, if you could compare Shaquille to a fighter style-wise, he, he, he's like, yeah, Thomas Hearns. Yeah. I mean, that's not, that's not bad yeah. comparison to have, is it? So Shaquille Thompson just uh, probably going to have a quick swig of that water, put his uh, sponsor's T-shirts on, 
And eventually, he's going to be over with Savage Dan. Shaquille, everybody I speak to says that you are the real thing. It was a very intense stare-off. Uh, what was going through your mind as you was looking to your opponent's eyes? I just can't wait for Saturday night um, to get in that ring. It's just going to be fireworks. Um, I was looking in his eyes. He looked scared. He was not ready. Um, and like I said, I can't wait to get in there and show everyone what it is I can do. The win is obviously important. Is it also important to look good doing it? 100%. 100%. Showing everyone what it is I can do. You know, I'm fighting on such a huge platform, Sky Sports, Boxer. Um, it's my first time, so showing everyone what it is I can do and looking good as well is the plan. All the best. Good luck Saturday night. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we continue right here at the Village Hotels, the official weigh-ins of Boxers Fight Night. This is the breakthrough. We move now to the lightweight division between Carlos Perez and Corey Gibbs. First to the scales, please welcome Carlos Perez. Carlos Perez at the open workout, he was the one that stood out for me. Uh, he's got a big team with him. They've all come in in the big flashy tracksuits. And he looked good hitting the pads. And I know that pads don't tell us too much, but he is a confident man. Yeah, he is. He's current current Spanish lightweight champion. He actually sparred Kid Galahad before Kid Galahad's last fight. He was one of the main sparring partners. Yeah, he's very he, he's a very good fighter. And you're right in what you said there, Andy. At the open workout there, he was oozing confidence, switching styles from all sports, all for to South Southport, this could be a tricky fight for Corey Gibbs. Johnny, Carlos Perez was 6 and 4 after his first 10 bouts. That's why that record on paper is actually a little bit misleading. He's been very good since then. And I know when he's responding with Kid Galahad, Kid Galahad is like he's trying to fight spaghetti. He give Kid Galahad a real handful to deal with. For him to come on with such a team, he's thinking, right, let's do this, let's have this. At the same time, Corey Gibbs, he looked a really, really pleasant on the eye technical boxer in the boxer series. But we also know that that was a sprint. Over this distance, do you think that we might get to see a little bit more about what Corey Gibbs is really about? Well, he's unbeaten in 16 fights, only knocking three out. Shows he's a better boxer than he is, a banger. Um, Hopefully, we will see some more of him. And to me, that we have to see that for the, his development as a professional. I think, you know, he's been a pro since 2014. He's been a pro a long time now. It's time to let him go. You're right, Johnny. The apprenticeship's been done. You know, he's had 16 fights now, and they've, they've got to try and push him on. This is a this is a big step up for him, Corey Gibbs, who is 16-0, and, and he has been in that boxer series. But you're right, Andy, what you say. It's over the three-round format. This is something slightly different. It's against an experienced pro who's boxed at championship. Chip level, so good step up for Corey level, so good step up for Corey Gibbsy. Yes, it's high risk, but also high reward. Yeah, Corey, winner of our boxer series tournament. His brother Tion is here as well. Uh, good to see him recovering from his injury. Let's get over to Corey Gibbs. He's with Sav Dan. Corey, you are a amateur standout. You won the boxer series without even really stepping out of second gear. Is this your toughest test to date? Um, I wouldn't think so, no. Like, um, that tournament, there were some top kids in that tournament, but I feel like I'll be able to settle down a bit in the eight-rounder now and show more of my skill, show more of my talent and more of my power as well because I'll be able to pick the shots more and just, and just settle down. You are a, a pure boxer. Yeah. How much of your opponent have you actually seen? Not much at all. Like, uh, I think it's, there's a video from six years ago, but watched a minute of it, but I'm just confident in my own ability. Each round, I'll work him out and then... I'll be victorious, 100%. What qualities do you want to show the fans on Saturday night? I want to show more power, more power. Obviously, I'm going to sit down on my shots a bit more. I've got more time now. So, yeah, eight, in the eight round, you're going to see more power and more skill and more, and more talent. Good luck for Saturday night. Thank you. And time now to introduce into the weigh-ins our first championship matchup right here and now for the vacant English middleweight title. Between Tyler Denny and River Wilson Bent. First to the scales, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tyler Denny. I don't want to get myself in trouble with Ben Shalom, but this fight could steal the show. Absolutely, you know, they've, they've, they've got history, these two. The fight last time they boxed was for the vacant English title. It was stopped on a technical decision after a clash of heads. 
that um, River Wilson been picked up and it went to a draw. So I know that Denny felt very hard done by in that fight. He felt that he was winning the fight. He felt he should have got the victory. But speaking to River Be um, River Wilson ben earlier on in the week, he was telling me that he didn't have the right preparation for that fight. Um, the fight was stopped for a cut, or two cuts actually, over his left eye. One of them he had 10 stitches in, the other one he had 6 stitches in. And ironically, ironically he told me the guy, the eye surgeon that ended up doing his eye, was an eye specialist, bought a ticket to go to the fight as a boxing fan. Obviously, he picked to sustain these cuts, and he was the man that ended up fixing his eyes and had become the boxing fan and, and, and a friend of River Bent. So it was a bad story, but done a great job because since that fight, which was in November, he's actually been in the ring two times. So, Johnny, you know when you pick up a cut or two cuts that you, you've had to have 16 stitches for, to come back that quickly and get in the ring and have two contests since then. And, and, but you know what it's like being a fighter. Sometimes we, we don't know what's good for us. The, the rest, they tell us to have a rest, but we still want to get in there. That just shows the determination, hunger, and the right attitude to have, you know, uh, uh, at this stage. He, he said that he's had that preparation for this fight that he never had in the last one. In the last one, yeah, all right, was a controversial draw. But this time he says he's going to make sure that he comes out victorious. This, this, this could be fighting the night. Confidence. This There's could been be a real confidence, night. confidence about him, you know. But you're right, yeah, it could be fighting the night. Let's just watch this one closely as they go face to face Ladies here. And gentlemen, for the weekend, English middleweight title, Tyler Denny and River Wilson Bennett. No emotion, no words spoken by either fighter and that was the one that we thought could potentially boil over we're going to hear from both of them. I think they have punched some respect into each other I think the respect they was there before but they, there is res some respect there let's hear from both men they are slowly making their way to the corner of the stage here in Coventry and there's no respect let's there there's no respect there trust <laughs> me Johnny says it. there's no respect Sav Dan does Johnny know what he's talking about let's get over to Sav Dan and let's hear from them this is the fight that most people think will end up being fight of the night. It is a fight that is a repeat. Um, it was a controversial stoppage last time or a controversial draw. Tyler, you feel like you were ahead on the cards. Yeah, it's, it wasn't controversial. It was just, um, it was just cheating, basically. I punched him. I ain't saying he's cheated, but like, I've punched him. It's cut, and they've, they said they've made up an egg clash. Do you know what I mean? If you're not seeing the egg clash, you can't just make it up and assume it's an egg clash when we're punching each other. So that's in the past anyway. Tomorrow, it's go time, man. River, what do you have to do to, to turn that controversial decision into a convincing win? Just got to be myself, go in there, be relaxed, and uh, yeah, it's going to be a big win for me. Yeah, for sure. It's been pretty tense in the build-up. Do you have any uh, final words to River? No, man, we know what time it is. He was in there last time and, you know, he was draining in there. And tomorrow, same again. River, a final message. Let's go. Let's have it. I'm ready, man. I'm ready. Good luck to both of you, boys. And the, the funny thing about that was, if they pulled the camera a bit, security was stood so tight next to both of them, you thought you'd know. Yeah, well, we were all a bit worried. <laughs> I have to be honest, I, I was a little bit worried. You know, everyone's been nice all week and then all, <laughs> all gets a bit funny on way in day, doesn't it? But that is quality matchup that we're really really excited for i cut you off johnny because you didn't get a chance to talk about karis arting stole she next do you think it will be a different type of nerves if you've been to the olympics overseas you know the whole of the uk is watching all your family are watching ladies and gentlemen right here any official do you think she will be suffering from any nerves no big school a matchup in the featherweight division between the Lithuanian fighter Masio Kaite, the highly anticipated professional debut of the Tokyo 2020 Olympic bronze medal, Karis Artingstall. First, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome fighter Masio Kaite. I was just saying, out of the, the two of uh, the two, this is supposed to be the proper bad one out of the two of them. I want to see her pro debut because uh, I think, Kante, you know, we're going to see somebody that will make an easy transition and, and does not care about any of this, does not care at all. She's a fighter, she's vicious. That's what I'm hearing for people inside the gym. Yeah, you know, some fighters feed off the pressure and, and, and you know, and 
she loves this stage, Karis. I've been around her the last few weeks, actually. She's been turning up a lot of the shows and stuff, and she's just been itching to get out there. This is her moment. This is what she's been waiting for. I think we're going to see something quite special tomorrow night. Olympic bronze medalist a world championship bronze medalist and a European championship silver medalist from Macclesfield. Please welcome Karis Artenstahl. This is a, another box ticked on fight week. The first fight week as a professional for Karis Artenstahl. She's done the open workout on the press conference yesterday. You can see... Olympic teammate and partner Lauren Price there and it's a role reversal because Karis did that for Lauren on her debut before this point she's so quiet no mix on Mars she wouldn't say boo to a goose that's and what sort of person she is when she gets in the that's like it kind of took me back a little bit and I thought ooh where's that come from oh, I like that she, she, she looks kind of down if you look at her performances though you look at her you go back to the Olympics and watch her in the Olympics that she throws punches with spite. She she's she's a very spiteful fighter. She's, she's very heavy handed. Look, like you say, she, she's angry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As a person, you would never see, expect him because she, like you say, she's quiet, quite subdued. She's just a lovely, warming person. That bell rings and the switch goes, Johnny. You know, and she's like got that. I like that as well. Look at her now. Look at her. Look at the intent in her eyes. The f and I actually thought it was a. <laughs> I thought she was the band. By and making a professional debut, Karen Karis, ahead of her professional debut, let's hear her mind and her mindset. Let's go over to Sab Dan. Karis, you seem in good spirits, you seem pumped up. Uh, but this is your, your first time making weight and, and weighing in as a professional. How was it? Easy, easy way to best I've ever made it to be fair I'm just ready to go now facing off taking weight on the scales I'm, I'm excited I'm just ready to go two weeks ago we saw your partner Lauren Price impress on her debut now it's your turn what do you want to show the fans just want to show them what I've been working on in the gym basically I've been in the gym since January amateurs is this it's the same sport but it's a different game um, I've been adapting a few things to my style so hopefully that shows on Saturday night you punch incredibly hard for your weight dare I say you'll be looking for a stoppage I'm not looking for anything, but she'll walk onto some clean backhands. I'm sure of that if I find my rhythm. Good luck for Saturday night. Thank you very much. Same sport, but a different game. I like that line. Yeah, I do as well. She's been making those slight adaptions. Whereas in the amateurs, they do three-minute rounds. They box three free, so they take the time a little bit more, and there's a little bit more of a game plan. But in the professionals... We know they do two-minute rounds, and the two-minute rounds is more explosive, now, and she's had to adapt to that. To the lightweight division, as we introduce the matchup between Stu Greener and Dylan, the natural Chima. First to the scales, please welcome Stu Little Canelo Greener. Little Canelo. I like that. Yep, like this guy. You I think the, the irony is probably Saul Alvarez is a, a big Stu Greener, more likely. <laughs> I think we all know the Dylan Chima story by now, but that record of five wins... A little bit misleading because three of those are in the boxer series. Before that, he was a two-time world kickboxing champion, and he's a lovely kid. This guy, he really is. You sort of, you do gravitate towards Dylan as well. He's just got a lovely aura about him. He's kept his feet on the ground. He works at his family shop still. He's up early in the morning, does his runs, goes to work all day, goes back in the gym in the evening. Incredibly committed, and he's got a great fan base, as you can hear here. 
I think tomorrow night we're going to see how how popular this young man is. Uh, and I'm quite, I'm, I'm, it's a sellout. Uh, it's a sellout. And it's, this is because of this fella here. That's yeah. what it's all about. Yeah, he sold loads of tickets, but he can fight as well, Johnny. You know what I liked about him? Looking at him in that boxing series, no one had heard of him. No one expected him to win that. But he went out there and he delivered. He beat like Otis Lookham, who was very heavy-handed. Scott Melvin, who had great technical ability. And in the final, the experienced Rylan Cholton. So it shows his pedigree, shows that he can do it. And he had to fight on the gum shield in that Rylan Cholton fight. They, they went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. He shows he can go in the trenches. Party atmosphere created. He got the fans involved. And yeah, it's just, it's just a good story to watch. What minor adjustments will he have to make, if any, moving from three threes in the boxer series to four threes? I don't think he'll have to make any adjustments. That, that, when you're at that stage, when you're doing three, four, six, there's no adjustments to be made. I think he's one of those guys that's incredibly fit. And when you're fit, Andy, that gives you, you your mind is in the right place. If your mind's in the right place, you go out there and you commit. So when I was boxing four rounds, at the end of the fourth round, Johnny, you'll back me on this one. At the end of the fourth round, you feel tired. If you've done a sixth round, at the end of the sixth, you feel tired. Eight, ten, twelve. You will mentally take yourself there. He's a very mentally strong fighter. He's, he's a well-conditioned kid. And I think I will have no problems doing the fours and sixes and the eights. Let's hear what he has to say. He's with Savdan. Dylan, you are the, the local lad. You have home advantage. Talk us through your emotions. Ready, I made way. You know, my emotions are calm and collected as, as they always are. So, you know, refuel now and I'm ready to go to war tomorrow night. Last time we saw you in the Sky Dome, you had three fights in one night. Is one going to be enough for you? <laughs> we'll see. If I take him out early, then I'm going to need to do some rounds in the back. But look, I, I'm, I'm ready for what, whatever comes. I'm coming to win. And uh, yeah, we're back at the Sky Dome. I'm happy. For those at home that have not seen Dylan Tuma before, what can they expect from you on Saturday night? Excitement, always excitement. When I come in the ring, you know what I'm going to come to do. You know, I've got the Nishan sub, the, the Kunda flag with me, fly, flying the flag of Sikki Proud. So, look, we're ready to go. I've got the whole, whole culture behind, behind me. We're all behind you. Good luck on Saturday night. So, Dylan Chima cutting a very confident figure. That's to be expected. Uh, obviously, at home in Coventry. He hasn't had to travel too far and uh, he's enjoyed staying at the, the family residence. He hasn't had to come out to the fight hotels, stuff like that. Atmosphere building nicely here in Coventry. The Boxer Breakthrough Series. Adam Azim in his first 10 rounder in just his fifth fight with a host of Boxer Breakthrough talent on the undercard. And of course, we have got Sam Eggington in an IBO title fight against the unbeaten Polish visitor Przemyslav Zisk. You can join all of our action from tomorrow on Sky Sports Arena and Sky Sports main event. And just to cue that up, let's go over to Ben Shalom and Adam Smith with Savdan. Um, stacked card. Talk to me about this, Bill. Yeah, there's a lot going on. What I couldn't believe then was uh, Tyler Denny and River Wilson Ben. There is something going on between them. I can't wait for that fight. I actually watched it back last night, and that was controversial. I, I, I don't know what happened, but we're here again. And there were a lot of fans there and a lot of upset fans last time. So hopefully we get a decision on that. And then just to see Karis weigh in like that, she is an absolute fighter. She is a warrior. I think it's all she wants to do. I've never seen someone so excited just to get in the ring. And that, this is a debut, so God knows what's next. Uh, can't wait. Adam, I know you're excited about absolutely every, foul, uh, every fight tonight uh, on Saturday night. Is there one that is catching the eye in particular? I, I think everything. It's, uh, it's a fantastic night in Coventry. We were here a few weeks ago um, with a wonderful tournament series. Brilliant atmosphere. Terrific action for three hours. I think we're going to get more action for more hours down on, on Saturday night. It's a chance for the young guns to come through. Very excited about Karis Artingsall. Very excited about seeing Corey Gibbs again uh, after a few months out. He's undefeated. A real talent. Dylan Chima, of course. And Adam Azim is 
is the, the name on everyone's lips. So uh, really, really excited to see Adam uh, progress. We're giving a very big peak time slot on Sky Sports. And then Sam Warrington, uh, Sam Eggington, rather, who's a fantastic uh, warrior, uh, a great sort of fearless fighter who's always in great value for money fights. He's had a couple of appearances here in Coventry recently. He's done really well. He's in with another unbeaten fighter. So uh, you add the English middleweight title to that as well and other stars coming through. I think it's going to be a really good night, Dan. You've mentioned Sam Eggington there. Ben, he's very, very rarely not in a fight of the year candidate. Are we expecting another one on Saturday night? I think he only knows one way. I said yesterday, I wish we could have him every week. This is an absolute another war for him, unbeaten. I've actually been speaking to the Polish team. They're coming to win as well. They come forward. We know what Sam Angleton brings to the party. And this is a big moment for him because if he wins this, there's some big names on offer for him. And it's on a big platform and he's back to the big time. I expect an absolute war tomorrow night. Let's talk Adam Azim. Uh, we know that he has big ambitions and he's flying through the ranks. He said he wanted to win titles and do it fast. He gets his first opportunity on Saturday night. How much faster can you push him? The, that, that's what I was saying yesterday. It's very, very difficult to know when you've got a talent like Adam Azim, how quickly you can move him. But Shane McGuigan keeps telling to me, faster, levels up, we need to go, we need to go. He's sparring middleweights and giving them problems and so you have to listen to someone like that Barry McGuigan says he's a special special talent and keeps encouraging it as well I think we just want to keep his feet on the ground but it looks as though nothing phases this kid the pressure just goes straight over him and uh, I think that's why we have so such high hopes for him as well I think the difficulty as well, Dan, is not only Shane wants to move in quickly, but Adam wants to go quick. He wants to be a young world champion. And, you know, he's got to go through the different levels. Um, the manner of the way that he's gone about the first few opponents has been phenomenal. He's got that X factor, that entertainment value as well. Um, reminds me of when Nassim Hamad was coming through, Amir Khan was coming through, Ricky Hatton was coming through. But he's got to keep performing, he's got to keep impressing, and if he continues to do that on a regular basis with momentum, I think he's going to go a long, long way, and I think he'll go a long way quickly. But it's all about momentum, rhythm, and continuing performances. Ben, talk to me about the, uh, th this you know, this event that we're doing here is breakthrough. You know, we're giving uh, fighters that maybe are not at the pinnacle of their careers the opportunity to headline still on Sky Sports. It's great for the sport. 100%. A lot's been made of all the Olympians we've picked up, all the medalists we've picked up. We've got two tournament winners in here tonight who really were going nowhere and have jumped into a tournament. We know they won all 50-50 fights, come through three fights, and now they get to progress their careers on a big platform like this. That's what I like. Adam Azim, unearthed, diamond in the rough, never went to the GB team either, and he's on the card. And it gives hope to every boxer coming through. It gives hope to the whole amateur scene. They're going to get their opportunities. And who knows who, who can go the furthest? Ricky Harden never went to the Olympics, and he was an absolute superstar. That's what they've got to look at. And I think Corey and Dylan both have a lot to go all the way. Opportunity knocks for a whole sort of wealth of fighters but we've worked very hard to also secure the elite amateurs as well. We saw Lauren turn over a couple of weeks ago. We've seen Fraser already. Caroline is going to be absolutely brilliant. Ben Whitaker will turn professional in the coming weeks. I'm really, really excited about Karis Artingstall. I think that she's going to have a style that is made for the pros. She's got the character, the charisma. People haven't been talking a lot about her. They've been talking about Lauren being the gold medalist. Bronze medalist Karis, watch out for her. I think she's going to be really entertaining, Dan. Over to you, Andy. Well, that sort of concludes our undercard action for now. Those of you that are watching us live on the Sky Sports stream, we are going to pause momentarily for all of our viewers on Sky Sports News. They're going to join us live. After that, we will have the live weigh-in of Adam Azim against Anthony Loffey, his first 10-rounder in just his fifth professional fight. And welcome to all of our viewers on Sky Sports News. You join us live in Coventry, ahead of the Boxer Breakthrough Series. We are very, very excited about Adam Azim. He takes on... Anthony Lofay from Belgium. It's just Adam Azim's fifth professional fight. It's his first 10-rounder. And there are high hopes for Adam Azim 
Spencer Oliver and Johnny Nelson. Spencer, come to you first. We're very excited about Adam Azim. Absolutely. You know, I think that he showed he's an exceptional, exceptional talent inside the ring, but there's something really, really special about him outside of the ring as well. You know, he's not, he's not cocky. He's just a, just a really nice, warm, genuine guy, but he's a special, special talent. I'm expecting big things from me. Stylistically, this opponent really should be made for him. I'm expecting another special performance. We don't see these kids, these talents come along that often. And when we get them, we like to, you know, follow their careers. And this one, to me, I think, yeah, I think we've got the real deal here. Johnny, we're going to catch up with you in a second. We're going to get straight over. I don't want to keep these fighters waiting anymore. Let's go over to our Master of Ceremonies, Bud A. Johnson. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, at the Village Hotels, for the official weigh-ins, we are about to introduce a championship matchup for the vacant WBC Youth Intercontinental Super Lightweight Championship. The first challenger to the scales, please welcome Anthony LaFay. Johnny, I didn't get a chance to ask you. It's a risk, but it's a risk that they all want to take with Adam Azim. We've seen it be put before with fighters that have been outstanding amateurs, uh, talents, expected big things of them. You put them in deep earlier on, hoping to, 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 to express their career. Now he's getting in there uh, with, with a fighter. Eight wins, one loss. Uh, experience, he's a winner. He's not, he's got a losing record. Now he's got to get in there with a winner. Someone that's confident, got a mature. I'll tell you what, Lofe, he's very, very confident. And see, he's been around the hotel room and he's come to win. He's not come to, to lose this. He sees this as a big platform and a great opportunity. The undefeated, please welcome from Slough, the assassin, Adam Azim. What a reception for Adam Azim from Slough. We're up in Coventry, you wouldn't have known it. He had a meet and greet last night. A hundred fans packed into a local restaurant to meet him. He arrived in a fleet of supercars. There's a big backing and there's a lot of hype behind Adam Azim. Let's see what he weighs on the scales. And weighted officially at nine stone, 13 pounds. Yep, comes in great, well well on the way. You know, I was with him last night in that restaurant, actually. And it's, it was a very strange, strange approach to a fight, actually. A night before a fight, a fighter normally goes home. He's, you know, he's trying to get himself tunnel vision, etc. He was there with 100 plus fans doing a meet and greet, relaxed, you know he looked Some confident. feel very comfortable yeah. doing that. Uh, uh, That's yeah, what I'm saying, it's something different. You, you create a gym environment, yeah, and because in the gym you produce cameos of brilliance in the gym. You create that gym environment up to a fight, in a fight, in your dress and everything. You do that, you relax, you want to show off, you want to. The, 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 the pressure's not on you. He's just come back from Miami where he's been sparring world class Cubans. He sparred Joe Cordina, who's now world champion. The guys are just pointing out to me, you might not be able to see this on the wide shot, but Anthony Lafay. The leg is shaking, he's uh, for all that sort of cool calm collected that you said earlier in the week, wow. that was a nervous face to face. Absolutely, yeah, and I've just said there he's come to win, but looking at when they had that face to face. Now this I is haven't where, seen that can I just say this, this is where fights can be won and lost. When you look into that opponent's eyes and when the reality kicks in. Adam didn't see that. The Adam no, didn't look no, down, he didn't see no, that. No, he didn't see it. No, but what I'm saying is when the reality kicks in, you see it in the fighter's eyes. You see that the, you see there's an aura about them. His leg was shaking like a leaf there. It was incredible. Let's see if Adam Azim did see it. He is with Adam Smith. I will ask uh, my namesake straight away, Adam Azim, fifth fight undefeated so much talent so much pressure on those shoulders the head to head the boys are asking did you see uh, anthony's leg shaking do you know what see i didn't i was so like looking right in his eyes i'm showing him that this is my title i'm not you know what this you ain't gonna take away from me yeah. <laughs> what is it adam that you believe makes you a very special fighter, not just only in Britain, but in the world. It seems to us you have the speed, the athleticism, the entertainment and the power. Can you put it all together through the levels in this sport? A hundred percent. Like, listen, I've been doing it for uh, since I've been four. So I've been in the whole life and I've got the best training in the world right here. Well, I'm going to bring Shane McGuigan in. You're very, very hot on Adam. You've been with the likes of David Hay, Carl Frampton, Josh Taylor, uh, so many uh, great fighters, George Groves. You've got a fantastic stable at the moment. Why is it that you think Adam is the very best you've ever had? 
because he's 19 and he's going to be reaching these heights by the time he gets to 21, 22. He'll be, I think he'll be world champion as early as that. Um, this is just a, a, a small step for him. And I said to him when he first came in the gym, I said, you need to go seven fight knockouts free. I think there's going to be a big knockout tomorrow night. You were born into this with your legendary father, so you've seen them all come and go. How do you think he's going to take the different styles that await him? And how quickly, Shane, do you want to move him? That's the thing, he adapts to a lot of styles very quickly. Um, I think it, his style naturally suits when guys come onto him, but he's learned how to attack now as well. So I think this, this is the stage we need to make him a complete fighter. So when he does reach the levels, he's able to, to, to win uh, you know, on all bases. So, um, yeah, I think you're going to see him being able to adapt over the time, but his power will always shine through. And finally, Adam, you've got the peak slot on Sky Sports in a midsummer night showcase. What are you going to show us? A definitely 100% explosive knockout with a different trick of a move at the back. We look forward to it. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Shane. So, as they said there, Adam has the platform. Now he has to show everybody why everybody is talking about him as the next big thing. If you want to watch that, it's 7 o'clock on Sky Sports Action and Main Event. Let's get back over to our MC, Bud A. Johnson. And ladies and gentlemen, we introduce our final contest of the official weigh-ins right here at the Village Hotels. In partnership with Bet365 Everlast Village Hotels and Wild Hydrate. Ladies and gentlemen, this coming up now is for the vacant IBO Super Welterweight Championship of the World. The first challenger for the title to step to the scales. Premislav Zizk. Well, it's... Adam Azim is the next big thing. Sam Eggington feels like comparing the two, he's been around forever, but you know exactly what you're going to get with the Savage. A better nickname would be Mr. Entertainment. You know exactly what you're going to get with Sam Eggington. It's going to be guaranteed excitement. And this is Przemyslav Zisk on the scales. He's unbeaten opponent from Poland. And I, I, I want to make this not, that tomorrow night special for, for Sam Eggington. It's for the vacant IBO Super Walkway title. It's a title. He's, he's going to walk away with something. If he gets through this tough, tough fight tomorrow night, he's got a chance to say, you know what, I did something yeah. in this game. He's a tough yes. cookie. We welcome his opponent. Holding multiple championships. British Commonwealth. Continental and Intercontinental Championships. Fighting out of Starbridge, West Midlands, as professional, 31 victories, 18 by way of knockouts, against seven defeats. Please welcome to the scales, Sam the Savage Eggington. Spencer, say what you see with this one. Looks a much more rounded fighter at 154. Yep, he looks a happy fighter, and a happy fighter is a dangerous fighter. You know, Sam Eggington looks much Sam better at 154. Savage when you listen. Speaking as an ex light light fighter, when you've got to make weight, those extra couple of pounds can really make a difference. Sam Eggington looks better than I've seen him in a long, long time. This weight is going to suit him, and I agree with Johnny. You know, he's got an IBO world title on the line. It's something he can go away, he can treasure, and I think that he's going to see something special for him here because stylistically, this fight is going to be explosive. You're going to get fireworks from the opening bell. Both guys have come to win. I'm expecting to see something special from Eggington. Look at his face. Look at the smile on his face. He looks better than I've seen him in a long time. And just clarification from our MC that both fighters inside the weight. We'll just pause in to see this face off now. IBO Super Welterweight Championship of the World. From Poland, Premislav Zizk. And from Sturbridge, West Midlands, Sam the Savage, Eggington! When you fought opponents with a language barrier and there was no verbal battle at all, did it help you or hinder you? Because Sam Eggington, he's got nothing out of Przemyslav Zisk because there hasn't really been a press conference where there was any verbal barbs or anything. He, all we can go off is what we've seen of Zisk. There's one fight on YouTube, I think, and what we've seen at the Open Workout. And what, it's not going to intimidate you. You're going to think, you know, I've got a job to do. You expect them to be a little tougher mm. because that's all they've got to show you. That's all they've got to try and in intimidate you with. Oh, it won't be intimidating at all. 
Let's hear what Sam has to say. He's with Adam Smith. Thanks, Andy. Spencer Oliver, Sam, was saying that you look a happy fighter. A happy fighter means a dangerous fighter. And uh, does the weight suit you well now? It does, yeah. I think, you know, we come up from a, from white weight a few years ago. I think, But I, I was still stuck in between the two weights. Um, you know, we went up to middle for a few. And I think that's really set me set me up nice for the Leverstone mark. Um, you know, it's not, it's not easy, but... But it, 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 it's 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 very doable, um, and it makes camp comfortable, hard but comfortable at the same time. If that makes sense. But so, so yeah, we're ready. Um, we're happy, and we're ready. You don't like to do things easy. You never have. You've got another unbeaten opponent in front of you, victorious in 18 so far. How do you deal with him tomorrow night? Because you've got a good record here in Coventry. Last couple of wins. I think I think like I say, John's always told me um, we don't we don't so much. I mean, John will watch them, and uh, you know the team will watch the opponents, and, and we'll get tips, and you know we'll do stuff like that. But I'm always told to do what I do well, um, and not not to think too much about the opponent. Um, I think we all know what's going to happen when I get in the ring, anyway. So as long as I work on what I do well. Um, we should have a, a good night. Let's bring John Pegg in. It's been a fantastic relationship between the two of you. Sam was telling us yesterday, you know, he started, he wanted to be a journeyman and look where he is. It's an extraordinary tale that you two have dished up together. Yeah, well, it was obvious after watching one spar, he was never going to be what he wanted to be. He was going to be a champion and it's been a long, hard journey. And, you know, now he's, he's back fighting for this title Got to say thank you to Sky Boxer and Mick Hennessy for looking past a couple of silly losses and realising that the most exciting fighter in the country is on your show tomorrow, basically. Sam, you're only 28, I can't believe that. Um, you've got an IBO title fight tomorrow. Where does this go, this story? A, a victory, I guess, back to the kids. You, you love your family, you're very close to them, and then just continue to take tough, good, exciting fights. Yeah, like I said, I, I've, said, I've said a few times this week... Um, it's hard to plan, you know, because we do take the opportunities as they come. So, you know, we'll be sitting down and planning one day, the phone will ring the next and, you know, it flips everything. So, you know, we'll win this title Saturday, which we will do. Um, and then, you know, we'll have to sit down and try and strategize some But again, you know, if the phone rings uh, and, it, and it's, it's worth taking, you know, we'll, we'll really look over it. Thanks very much, John. Sam, value for money. Mr. Entertainment, Sam Eggington. That concludes our weigh-in. Before our viewers on Sky Sports News leave us, it's prediction time. The Eggington fight for you, Johnny. I want to, I want Sam to pull it off. I have a funny feeling he's going to get. He's going to, going to come up short against a guy that's unbeaten. I can bang. I just think it might be a little bit too far for him. I hope I'm wrong. With a Johnny Nelson curse, that means Eggington one round knockout. <laughs> Spencer Adam Azim. Well, I'm going to pull it out there. I think that Adam Azim wins this fight, and I think he wins it in the first round. I think he's that special. I think stylistically his opponent's made for him. Looking down and watching his leg trembling, like shaking like a leaf. I think Azim wins, and I think he wins in style in the first round. Make sure you join us tomorrow. It is the Boxer Breakthrough Series, and it's live from Coventry.